Okay, good morning once again. Um, I think uh, we can start now. Um, please, um, all of you should mute your microphones. And we were asked to ask a question. Okay. Today we are going to look at logistics management and be going deep into logistics because when you look at the all the supply chain functions uh, we talked about last week, you could see that the health service um, will need more of logistics because the other aspect of supply chain may not apply to you, but the logistics aspect is very, very important when it comes to um, health services. So today we're looking at um, logistics management, which will uh, be linked to, uh, how do you call it? Um, health. So mostly our examples and everything will be on health. So we're looking at logistics as we talked about last week. Last week, um, we got to know the meaning of logistics through the supply chain functions. And we're able to understand that logistics is, is, is how equipment health commodities or other equipment are, are moved, distributed, stored, and then um, how they are um, also procured. So we realize that the logistics function um, mostly um, deal, deals with um, distribution, transportation, warehousing, and, and storage of goods. So in this case, when looking at logistics management, it is the part of supply chain management that plans, implements, and controls the efficient, effective forward and reverses flow and storage of goods, services, and related information between the point of origin and the point of consumption in order to meet customer's requirements. All this lengthy, what do you call it, definition or um, explanation to logistics management. What, what we can take from it is that, that is, it is about the movement um, a supply chain management plan that implements and controls the efficient and then effective forward and reverses flow. When you talk of the forward, it's the onward distribution of the goods or health commodities to the various um, destinations or centers that are supposed to be where the goods are supposed to be sent to. And then there will be the reverse flow. When you talk of reverse flow, it means the return. We are talking about the return. So sometimes some of the items get to uh, destination and then uh, due to one or two uh, issues, they are returned. And what will cause returns? Sometimes the goods become obsolete. When we say a product or we have obsolete item or items. What it means is that not that they are expired or damaged. Sometimes they are out of use. If you, uh, they, 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 are, they, they are no longer uh, useful. Either new technologies uh, or new method of doing things have rendered those equipment obsolete. Or the, the, sometimes there are instances that uh, 
you may have certain equipment in your facility, but you don't have um, you don't you, you, you don't need those equipment or even treatment like a, a facility may be given uh, let's say theater beds, meanwhile it may be a cheap compound or a health post that may not have um, a, a surgeon. And so the, the theater bed may be lying idle. In this case, sometimes you are asked to return those ones. And you know that Ghanaians in the diaspora, normally they buy hospital equipment, they send them to their hometowns, their villages, and then you go to their uh, stores and they are lying idle. No one is using them because um, nobody can use it. You can't use them in that area or nobody knows how to use those. So those items are reversed or returned. And the return, we can also talk about expired uh, items. We can talk about items that are damaged. And sometimes they are not uh, obsolete or damaged, but you need to return them for onward distribution to other facilities that may uh, la that may be, that may need those items. So th these this is the the rivers when they talk of the rivers. This is how the rivers um, or the returns occur in, in in supply chain or in logistics. And then when you talk of storage of goods, the other aspect of logistics is to uh, ensure that the goods are stored in the inappropriate condition or inappropriate or temperature. You know that some goods require special storage uh, devices. So you need to make sure that the one of the uh, task of logistics is to ensure that you have uh, the right storage, uh, what they call it, um, uh, equipment in place and then other services, and then information related. And then we have other related information between the point of origin and the point of consumption in order to meet customers' requirements. You know, anytime you procure items, there are certain information you need to be able to handle those equipment, how the equipment must be used, how it has, that is why every product you buy has a manual. Almost every report that you buy, there is a manual. The manual instructs you how to use a product. Logistics management is also an integrating function. When you say it's an integrating function, which means that it doesn't work in isolation. It's not a standalone function. It needs, it's, it's a collaborative thing. It, you need to um, coordinate. Mm -hmm. and optimizes all logistics activities as well as integral logistics activities with other functions, including marketing, sales, manufacturing, finance, and then information technology. So sometimes we say that logistics or supply chain, either the logistics or the distribution aspect of marketing. So you need to work hand in hand with the marketing team, you need to work in hand with the sales team, and then uh, manufacturing, you need to talk to the manufacturer as well. Um, the manufacturer can give you enough information about the product because you need to know the, the, the characteristics of every product you procure, how it has to be stored, even the mode of transportation, everything you need that information from the manufacturing um, side. Then you need uh, what they call it. Um, the finance department, you need to work hand in hand with the finance department because all that we are talking about goes on to finance because you, you don't, without finance, you cannot function. Without finance, you cannot procure. Without finance, I mean, your, 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 your logistics um, uh, system cannot work effectively. So you must always collaborate with the finance department and then you also need technology, information technology. You know that we are moving, we, we, we've moved, not that we are moving, we've moved to, uh, we are in the information technology, uh, information technology era where 
everything. So when you look at a logistics management information system, which you are already uh, using in your facilities, it is, it is um, ICT based. And so you need to also collaborate with the uh, ICT department to be able to work or function effectively. Yeah, I have muted you, so has a, uh, So let us look at the logistics function. The logistics including quantification, procurement, inventory management, transportation, and fleet management, and data collection and reporting. So when you look at the logistics function, it is an operational function of supply chain. And so that one, it includes quantification. And what is quantification? For supply chain is, is you determining the quantity that needs to be was supplied or the quantity that needs to be procured. So you need to know when you are, you don't just get up and then go to the market to buy. You need to know the quantity that you're going to buy. Then we're talking about the procurement aspect of which is purchasing. You need to, you need to buy here. Procurement is not just going to the market to buy. Uh, the buying is one aspect of it, but the procurement starts uh, from, from somewhere. It starts from need identification. When someone identifies a need, let's say a facility says, we need this item, that is where procurement starts. When someone identifies a need, and that one, that need is communicated to the department that, it, that is responsible. Mm -hmm for approval, then it goes through the procurement process. So in procurement, you, you either go in to buy um, it yourself or you can outsource. You outsource only when you don't have capacity to do it yourself. So, or you think that um, you want to concentrate on your core, uh, what do you call it, um, mandate, you are providing healthcare, you want to concentrate on that. The, the aspect of it, getting you the uh, equipment, getting you uh, goods and services, you think that if I give it to uh, an external agent or an outsider, it will be appropriate so that you focus on your core mandate. In this case, um, you, procure, you outsource your procurement, you give it to uh, other people to do it for you. Then we're looking at inventory management. Inventory management is very You need to manage them. You need to uh, keep them in a warehouse. You need to store them. And so you need, you, having stored them, then those items, inventory simply means items or, or goods or stock. And so these items need to be managed effectively. You need to know your order level, when to order, when not to order, which item uh, uh, must be um, moved first. That's why we talk of the FIFA leaf for first thing, first out, last in, uh, uh, first out. There are all, uh, there's, you, you manage your inventory in a manner that will bring optimization. So you also must make sure that you don't overstock. Neither do you understock. There should be optimi optimization. As I mentioned in economics, when it happens like the way demand meets supply, we call that we call it uh, equilibrium. So in this point, uh, when we talk of optimization in inventory, it means that you are buying what is what is needed. You, you, you are not doing. Uh, what do you call it? In, in supply chain, we say that overstocking and understocking, they are all bad, but then overstocking is considered as a, a necessary evil. 
because if you overstock, sometimes it's better than understocking, even though overstocking uh, holds up your capital. So you try to uh, optimize your inventory. Then transportation and fleet management. This function of the logistics is also very important. Transportation, you need to select the mode of transport. You need to know the appropriate mode of uh, transport um, system that will be conducive for your own uh, calling. Uh, I need to tell you people, and if you yeah, and you've gone ahead to unmute yourself and you are disturbing everybody, please. So when you look at the logistics function, we're looking at the transportation. So transportation is very, very important. The mode of transport, um, every commodity and, and how it must be transported. The, the, the choice of transport is very, very important. But in our part of the world, we mostly deal with road transport, but elsewhere they have access to other, 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 other means of transport. They have air, they have, um, uh, marine, they can use the rail, and even in the advanced uh, countries, they use what the conveyor belt. Okay, under the tunnel, they have a conveyor belt. They put the goods there, and then it it it, it goes straight. But in our case, we look at the options available, and then the options available to us. We need to also look at the the condition and what circumstances can. Um, uh, products be transported to their destination. And then we are looking at the fleet management. The fleet management is about how you manage the, the, the transport, uh, what we call it, uh, facilities at your disposal. Uh, you're looking at if it is vehicles, look at the number of vehicles at your disposal and how you, you what do you call it, uh, you manage them. How you shuttle each uh, vehicle. You, you need to also track the movement, make sure that you use the whatever is at your uh, disposal efficiently. And then another aspect of logistics function is the data collection and reporting. So at your end, when you're using the logistics management information system, you collect data from, uh, what do you call it, uh, patients. At the end of the one day, they come, you take their vitals, when they go to the lab and other things, they are recorded. You know that in some facilities, in some facilities, uh, they are trying to do away with paperwork. So most of the things, even when you go to the lab, they don't uh, give you uh, the lab results on, on, on the paper. It is sent directly to the doctor. So the doctor will go into your folder and then pick it and then work on it and it helps. It, 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 it reduces the incident of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, people going, you know that where you have the cards, somebody can, after you visit the facility, somebody can go there. It is easy for somebody to go and bribe somebody to go and pick your folder to know exactly what is wrong with you. But if you have it on the, what do you call it? On the uh, on the system on the computer, sometimes it's difficult for somebody to just get in there and then assess them, and then you, you use it to collect data, and then it's also used to report because the data you collect, sometimes the system is able to um, uh, what do you call it? Um, once the information, everybody can assess the information. So that one um, is so system. Everybody who has access, who is uh, what they call it, legit access to have access is easy. Doctors, I I muted you. You if, if um. 
You see, this, this recording, the, the moment you do that, sometimes when we play back and the noise are too much, they have to uh, delete some of them, which is not good. What I, I, can, I can say again. Who is that? Okay, so while supply chain management includes the logistics activities plus the coordination and collaboration of staff levels and functions, the supply chain includes global manufacturers and supply and demand dynamics. The logistics tend to focus more on specific tasks within a particular program in the health system. So you realize that supply chain um, uh, is, is broader. Mm -hmm. It deals, it, 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 it deals with a lot of things, but when it comes to logistics in the health sector, it has a specific task. And what are these tasks? Uh, it, to make sure that the goods get to their destination one, to store the goods in the, in, in the right condition, and then make sure that they get to their uh, destinations uh, on time. So we are looking at effective management of, of, of stock, making sure that they are available when they need them. Please, any question with regards to what we've done? <clears throat> okay, so let's find out why is... Why should we concern ourselves with logistics as midwives? So the well-functioning supply chains benefit public health programs in these ways. One, it increases program impact. Then two, it enhances quality of care. Three, it improves cost effectiveness and efficiency. So what uh, um, logistics does in, 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 in supply chain, mm -hmm. because it's one of the supply chain, it's one of the functions of supply chain and it, it, it helps organizations um, increase program impact and then it enhances quality of care as well as um, improving cost effectiveness and efficiency. So let's look at how logistics uh, increases program impact. If a logistics system provides reliable supply of commodities, more people are likely to use health services. Customers feel more confident about the health program and when they have constant supply of commodities, it motivates them to seek and use services. The reason why it increases, uh, it, it impacts on, on, on uh, program is that when you have, whenever you're organizing any program, like let's say uh, PPAG, okay, we see that as it's a program. And then when they come and you don't have the equipment, when they come and what they need, they don't get it, then they don't come back. But anytime they come there and they get all the services, there was a reliable supply of uh, health commodities. Okay, uh, they, they, they feel more confident about the health system. See, anytime people visit our facilities and they get what they need and they are, they, they, they are given whatever uh they need they feel confident about the system but when they come and they are always referred we don't have these go oh, years little, little things you don't have them then they lose confidence in the system and some prefer that is why you go to a place there is a hospital and you all think see people going you see in those i think these days things are changing now conformity is more or less a referral center. In those days, anytime 
I went to confirm not to, to visit somebody or to do anything. I get angry because you see a lot of people going to confirm not to. Meanwhile, hospitals like the uh, those days are Tonzo Agogo, the one at Tonzo Agogo, the one at um, what do you call it, South Central. So, and some hospitals within Kumasi, you go there and the traffic is not huge. These days, uh, what I've said, especially the ENT section, if it is not referral, you can't just get up in the morning and say that I'm going to that place. And that is what Confamochi sh should be. I even think that sometimes the polyclinic, the polyclinic should be uh, moved from there to another place so that Confamochi uh, will, will only take care of emergency cases, referrals. Other than that, a lot of people go there to disrupt them. I mean, that is how I see it. But there are certain things that shouldn't end up at Confanoti. It can go to Kenwes, it can go to Menchia, it can go to other places. But people prefer going there. Why do people go there? Because of the confidence they have in the system. But they feel that there, when they go, all the specialists are there. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of all hospitals, <laughs> I should say, in the region. So when things uh, become uh, difficult, that will be the final destination. So people prefer going there first before they are even referred to. And so because they have the people believe that they have what it takes uh, to care for them, they have confidence in that system in, in Confanochi more than other other facilities. But that is the but I don't I don't have that belief. Sometimes you go there and the frustrations you go through, it is better I go to some nearest uh, facility. So this is how logistics increases the uh, program impact because it is able to supply the needed um, uh, supplies. People feel confident in the system. So the next is that logistics enhances quality of care. Well-supplied health programs can provide superior service, while poorly supplied programs cannot. Likewise, while supplied health workers can use their training and expertise fully, directly improving the quality of care for clients. So what it means is that it enhances quality of care. Once you have thought, you have to work. See, the problem that we have in our part of the world is that not that the personnel are not good, they are good, okay? But they don't have what it takes. If we're a surgeon, mm, if we're a surgeon and you don't have uh, the, the necessary tools, the needed tools to perform... Uh, so we say that when you are able to provide all that uh, clinicians required to work, then they are able to provide quality care. Mm, quality care is not just the human being, it's not just the nurse or the midwives, uh, the midwife helping. It is, it is also about the equipment. It's about supplies. When you have them, you become effective. And, and what happens is that it boosts your morale. Okay. An effective logistics somehow provide adequate, appropriate supplies to help providers, increasing their professional satisfaction, motivation, and morale. And then motivated staff are more likely to deliver a higher quality of service. So the environment in which you work, that is why people prefer go working at Confanoti and then some district hospitals because at least uh, you have the basic equipment you, you need to, to function as a midwife. But you find yourself in some cheap compound and I know some of you sometimes you, you, you have to buy your own uh, gloves and other things, sometimes disinfectant because you are the one uh, at the forefront, you are the one exposed some of these things. So if you don't have what it takes to work, then you cannot function. 
So some people on their own buy some of these things so that at least they'll be able to what, do what is expected of them. Because if you are going to deliver a baby, you can't, if, if, if your facility has no choice, you cannot do it with your bare hand. So you'll be forced to what, buy your own. And these are some of the what, the, 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 the demotivation, it says as a demotivation to, to health workers. Well, you have all that you need, all the basic supplies, it motivates you and you are happy. Sometimes it's not all about money. The facility you work in, and I know some of you go to uh, other private uh, hospitals and clinics to work. And sometimes when you go there and they have the facilities, I know I have visited one or two facilities like um, Praspe, uh, where, I mean, it's a private hospital, but they have the basic facilities. So if you are a worker there, uh, you, you, you are good to go. At least you know what to do. But where you find yourself in a place where common gloves, basic uh, disinfectants, you don't have them, you become demotivated. So the supplies also motivate people. It, 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 it helps you. Uh, it makes you come out. I'm coming. I'm sending her to treat. Midwives. Midwives. You see, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the nursing. I'll try and get to the nursing, uh, what do you call it, uh, recordings and yours, and then you compare the noise level. I know your number is huge, so definitely uh, uh, proportionate wise, but please minimize, minimize it. It's not good. When it happens like that, it, it, it affects the flow. It means mean that you are, uh, they interrupt you and sometimes you forget whatever examples you are giving. It, it doesn't help. So please try and control yourselves. So the, the third point, the, the third uh, reason why logistics is important to you is that it improves cost efficiency and effectiveness. An effective supply chain contribute to improve cost effectiveness in all part of your program. And it can stretch limited resources. Strengthening and maintaining the logistics system is an investment that pays off in three ways. So if you have efficient logistics system, it reduces the costs. Because if you have efficient transport system, you are able to reduce the cost of transportation. It affects the price. Uh, the supply, uh, the plant bears all the costs. Mm -hmm. All the costs that occur within the supply chain. So with that, if we are able to reduce uh, costs, maybe through transportation, through the distribution system, definitely the price of, of, of the commodities will come down for the final user. So we're saying that it pays off in three ways. One, it reduces losses due to overstock, waste, expiry, damage, pilferage, and then inefficiency. So when you talk of overstock, Overstocking is, 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 is also not good in supply chain because when you overstock, you hold up capital. There are times that you can see that in your facility, you have some items more than you need and others you don't have. So in supply chain, you try to optimize it. You don't overstock, you try to make sure that you have a bit of everything that you need to work at the right quantity. And then you try to avoid waste. How do we avoid waste? Because when we overstock, the possibility of, of some of the items expiring or getting damaged is very high. And then 
expiring because most of the items that we overstock, they expire when we are unable to use them. And then damages and then pifrage. Pifrage is stealing. So in logistics of the supply chain, we use pifrage instead of saying stealing. And then the inefficiency. When we don't manage our stock well, uh, it brings about some of these inefficiencies. And then the second point that it protects other major programs' investments. Okay, when you are able to reduce cost, then you can have enough money for other, other things. If you protect, if you are able to reduce your cost, you are able to invest other or areas. And then it maximizes the potential for cost recovery. It helps you to recover the costs that you, you incur if you manage your um, logistics system effectively. So why should logistics matter to you as a, as a, as a, a midwife? Mm -hmm. As a midwife, why should you care about logistics? Because you, you don't procure anything. Your, your, your task is that you get in there to deliver and the equipment must be available for you to use. But to, to ensure that public sector health commodity logistics systems continue to provide commodity security and to improve program impact, quality of care and cost efficiency, we must convince policymakers and decision makers that contribution to strengthening logistics system will result in increase of overall program effectiveness. So in logistics, we say, in supply chain, we say, the quality of your input affects the quality of your output. So if you have what it takes to work, they give you all the equipment you need, the materials you need to, to function as a midwife, then you are also going to give your all. You are going to increase productivity, you will increase your effectiveness. Because if the things are not there, I mean, you can't do anything. There are times that we get the, you know, that this situation, if, uh, if there were maybe equipment, they needed equipment, you could save the situation. But if you get there and there's nothing, so you sit and it's just like, you don't know your job. And so that is why it is important that whatever you need. If not in full, it should need to have way. And that is the essence yes, of what. Well, I will feel that you should have, uh, when the guy comes, you can enter. You know that you don't wait to see. Well, you feel that the guy can enter. But if my case is fast, you can enter. And don't wait to see. Good morning. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen, I've seen, uh, Faith Abdullah, I've seen your hand up. So please, can I speak? Yes, please, you can. So, please, I want to suggest that um, when we have a lecture, kindly make one or two people co-host so that they can help you control the This one class. is being handled by the IT team. So it is the IT team that can do that. You realize that I'm a co-host, okay? Previously, previously, we were the host, but this time it's being recorded by the IT. The reason why we do that is that the R system is is somehow uh, let, let, let me put it this way stable 
Because yesterday, for example, when I was teaching, my network went off. So I had to move to the IT uh, office to do it. So that's where I'm doing the lectures now. That's where I'm having the lectures. And then even when I go off, the AI system is on. So the AI system is able to record. And if you have realized this semester, uh, when we're having lectures, you don't just go off as it used to happen last semester. Because the uh, IT, they are, they are hosting it. So when even the co-hosts, uh, when the co-host goes off, the AI system is still active. So I can't make you a call because I don't have access. Okay. The right answer. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So let's let's look at a logistics cycle. So logistics cycle is organizing logistics system activities. So. Logistics is the is the is, is is a cycle, and then it starts with the customer, or in a case we can put there the client, okay, the customer or the client, because you don't deal with customer, you deal with patient, you deal with clients, and so it's a cycle, and from the clients and we is based on the. Realize that when it comes to product selection uh, in our facilities, it's not every product that we sell there. There are some drugs you see outside. There are some drugs when you go to uh, the chemical shops and other pharmacy shops, you see them, but they are not in um, uh, hospitals or they are not part of the essential medicine list or the national uh, medicine list. We have a national medicine list. It means that any drug that is not on the national medicine list cannot be in our facilities. You can't bring them there. And that is why some facilities, I'm not confident actually they have them. Some hospitals have started traditional medicine or herbal medicine to their, uh, what do you call it? Um, there was a time that a, a professor was uh, making, uh, I think it was Professor from home, watching. He said that at the hospital, somebody had a, uh, a wound, okay? And then uh, they were using, they wanted to use traditional medicine, so okay, they said, okay, let's try. So the wound um, was big, so half was covered. They, were, they used the orthodox medicine for one side and then the traditional medicine for the other. And surprisingly, the traditional medicine healed faster. Mm -hmm. It healed the wound faster than the orthodox. Okay, and so some that is why these days they don't, they don't rubbish uh, everything because even the orthodox medicine, they get them from herbs. But then you need to regulate it. You need to regulate it so you need to select the product, the product that can be on our shelves, product that can be in the hospital pharmacies across the country and product that cannot be there. That's the one you go to some pharmacy shops, some painkillers, you never see them in the hospitals. No, it's not part of the national medicine list. So the product selection is important and then it's not done in isolation. You don't just get up and say that. It is not the procurement department uh, that select products. No, they, they, they don't have locals. You don't have that right. Normally, you have the pharmaceutical board, you have physicians, you have physicians, you have other bodies mm, uh, who, who know much about drugs. And then probably the procurement people, they, say they will select, normally they will select and give it to them that these are the drugs that we have selected, these are the drugs we want in our pharmacies. And then we look at the quantification. Okay, when you select a product, you need to know the quantities that you need to buy. So the cycle goes from the customer's end, you get from the customer, you get to know the product that you need to select. So you go to some countries, even in some African countries, where uh, malaria is not 
uh, they don't have malaria. There are no malaria cases. You won't get any malaria cases over there. They won't buy malaria drugs. Malaria, that is why uh, this lady died. Uh, Alice Moe's daughter died in is it Mauritania, or one of the African countries. Uh, she, 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 she contracted malaria, and then they didn't have malaria drugs, so she was uh, isolated. We didn't know how to treat it, uh, and she died. Something that an ordinary person on the street, uh, a lay person on the street, can easily can can easily uh, diagnose. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, even some of you, midwives, who should know better, you wake up, your head is paining you, you feel dizzy, then you walk straight to the pharmacy, you pick uh, any malaria. Uh, drug then you take you care yourself but in some countries they don't have them and so how you need to know the quantity quantities that you need to buy the quantity you procure will determine will be based on what the 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 the, the, the prevalence the number of cases you get and then from there you go to procurement Having selected a product and determined the quantity, you then go into um, buying the product. Then from there, it goes to another cycle. Once you procure, somebody must manage it, inventory management, storage and distribution. Whilst managing the inventory, you need to store them, you need to make sure that the product, the product are stored in appropriate uh, or, uh, condition or temperature and then you need to that aspect of distribution also the aspect of distribution also comes in so it's a cycle from the customer based on the customer's um, needs you go into product selection when you select the product you must know the quantity you will need then you go to procurement from procure after procuring it you need to manage the inventory if you need to put mechanisms in place to manage the, the stock that you have acquired, then the storage. Where do we store them? And then we go to distribution. Then in the middle, you know that these ones are operational function. They play a supporting role to these, uh, what you call it, um, cycle. We have the LMIS, the Logistics Management Information System, where you people use in your facilities. Then you come to the pipeline monitoring. What is pipeline monitoring? You did, within the supply chain, okay, it's a chain. So we see it as a pipeline. That we have a lot of people playing, a lot of a lot of what, uh, players within within the chain. And then each and every one of them has a role to play. And you monitor that. You need to make sure that everybody is playing his or her role uh, within the chain. And then organization and staffing. You need to, you need to, one of the things, one of the functions of logistics, you need to staff, you need to organize and then uh, make sure that you have the right caliber of staff that will help you work. Then budgeting. You know that the products we, we select, the quantity we procure will be based on the budget, will be based on the uh, money our disposable income, how much we have. So you, you, since you don't have unlimited budget, you cannot just go and procure any quantity or select any product you want. Yeah, sometimes product selection and then the quantity uh, depends on the, on, the, on the budget you have, then supervision. You need to supervise, you need to supervise. If you don't supervise, then uh, things will not go well. So having done all these things, you need to evaluate. Evaluation is very, very important. You need to know the tasks that you have performed. Whether you are on the right path, you look at what the discrepancies, you look at the, portal, the, the loopholes in the system, and then you correct them. So you need to evaluate your activities to see whether you are making progress or not. So this is all the logistics uh, cycle. So let's go into details how these uh, logistics uh, cycle, how the, let's look at the major activities 
uh, in the logistics cycle. One, the first, we talk about the customer. So everyone who works in logistics must remember that they select, procure, store, or distribute product to meet customer needs. So when we're doing, when we start a supply chain and we're doing the components of supply chain, we say that the client or the customer is the most important member of the components. Because without them, uh, without the patient, you wouldn't need a midwife. Without you as student, my presence will be irrelevant. There will be no lecturer. So there should be a customer. It should be a client before logistics can function effectively. So the logistics system ensures customer service by fulfilling the sex rights. And when we talk of sex rights, okay, of logistics, who can help me with the sex rights of logistics? Let's discuss it. Who can help me? The rights of we talk of the rights products I've given you the start when you talk of rights products. One of the six rights is rights products. So who can help me with the rest? So the right time, right place. Yes, right con. Right customer is no part. Right product. The right product is correct. Right condition, no. Right price, right cost is good. So have we got in our um, six? One, uh, the product is correct. The time is correct. The place is correct. So we have three. The price, making four. So it's level two. Have we talked about the quantity? So we should have right quantity. Okay. How many now? Right condition. And there was. You have the time, you have place. We have um, uh, price. The play destination is place. Right condition. No, right condition is right condition. You mean right now? Uh, it's, it's good answer, but it's not part of the right. Uh, somebody's hand was up. No, 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 you talk about the cost is okay. Yes, Rebecca. Say, someone yes, asked, or, someone mentioned the right um, customer. He says, no, but it was uh, to understand with the right customer, if you buy the product, and you are not going to use for the rights as person. Like for the example that you gave that uh, some of the uh, people at the diaspora, if they ship the things to the, their particular village, if they are not going to use it, they are going to keep the thing. So you have to go and give it to the person who has the hospitals that needed the thing. So if without the rights customer, the thing that you are buying, whom are you going to use for? That's my concern. <laughs> The right customer, that is why we say that from the onset, it is based on the customer demands, okay, that you, you identify the product. That is why certain facilities will not request for certain product because they don't deal with such ailments in there. When it can, they refer to the appropriate center. But everything that we are talking about here, is, is done to satisfy the customer. So the customer is the reason why the rights are there. 
Uh, somebody has currently uh, put them there. Uh, we have the right time, right cost, right quantities. Uh, that is the right goose, is the right product. We talk of the right um, price, and then the police did not come. So, right, you add a place to it, that is Afro, uh, Z Jamia, Sylvia. So, we talk of the right time, we talk of the right cost, we're talking about the right quantities, we're talking about the right product, right price, and then at the right place. And some will make it seven. We may, we'll talk about what? The right quality. Some, some books will talk about seven. Some will, will talk about the right quantity. So thank you very much uh, for your input. And so the, the, you do this for the customer and each activity in a logistics cycle, therefore contribute to excellent customer service and to ensuring commodity security. Each of them, each of the, or the activities within the logistics cycle contributes in a way to, 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 to quality uh, care. And let us look at award, the product selection. Product selection in any other logistics system, yeah, the right goods is the same as the right product. It seems, as I said the other time, some of you log in for the Listen, sake of mute yourself. In. Some of you only log in for the sake of logging in. Okay. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't help at all. So the next um, major activity in the logistics cycle is a is a is a product selection, and then in any health logistics system, the health programs must select product. In the health logistics system, a national formula and therapeutic committee. From a surgical board, board of physicians, or other government appointed group may be responsible for product selection. So when it comes to product selection, you know that as I indicated earlier, it's not done by the procurement team. They don't select anything, they don't have the right. Okay. So it is the products that have been selected by uh, a team mm, of experts, clinicians, uh, we can talk about. Uh, the pharmaceutical council in Ghana, they will bring their representative. Uh, times the nurses and midwives, they are all, you, they, they select people from all these professional bodies to come together to decide on the product. Or sometimes most countries have developed essential medicine list patent on the World Health Organization model list. So for most countries, you also use uh, the WHO goals or model list. So these are the drugs. You realize that during the COVID, a prominent professor died. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they were even told that they had to take the presidential jet to Kenya and then to South Africa in search of a particular drug, which as a country, it's not on our, what do you call it, the national uh, medicine list or the essential medicine list. And so we could not um, buy because those drugs, you needed, you needed government, you needed approval from the government before you can bring those drugs in. So it tells you that there are drugs, there are powerful drugs out there, but then uh, we don't have them on our essential medicine list. And that's why sometimes you see our big men traveling outside for uh, medication. So there are some drugs that you won't get them here. You get them from outside. So when it comes to the product selection, 
all these bodies, they come together and they decide that these are the drugs that we can have on our essential medicine list for Ghana. And, and every health facility uh, must conform to it. So in your facility, you cannot, you cannot go for any drug which is not in the essential medicine list. You cannot go for them. Hey. So say Yana. So the next one is the quantification. After products have been selected, the required quantity and cost of each product must be the and cost of the product required for a specific health program and to ensure an uninterrupted supply for the program, determine when the product should be procured and distributed. So having selected the product, then you need to know the quantity that needs to be procured, the quantity you need, uh, and then the quantity that must be distributed to the various um, facilities. So after uh, quantification, after deciding on the, the, the quantity that you need to uh, buy, then you go into the procurement itself. So after supply plan has been developed as part of the quantification process, quantities of product must be procured. Health systems or programs can procure from international, regional, or local source of supply, or they can use procurement agent for this logistics activity. So as I indicated, you need to, you can, you can, you can internationally or you give it to local, companies to do the supply for you. You can provide, you can procure from international bodies. You can also provide procure from, when you talk of regional bodies, we look at, we're talking about maybe West Africa. You can talk about Africa. Some people will restrict their procurement to their region or maybe certain countries that are okay for brass you can't buy from here. You need to buy brass from this country and then there are countries that produce quality drugs, like Germany. But these days, most of the drugs we consume in our part of the world, they come from India. Yeah. India has taken over the drug market. Not that uh, the companies are Indian companies, but they feel that when you produce in India, you get cheap, cheap labor. You also have the technical know-how. You know, when it comes to science, all of in, the Indians are doing well, so well in the science when it comes to ICT and medicine all of, uh, and drug production. Uh, the Indians are on top. You pick any drug. These are a few of the drugs come from India. Even the big, big pharmacy shops, the big, big pharmaceutical companies we know in Ghana, like MS Chemist, and all those people, Poku Pharma, Osons, all the noise they make, they, put, they, they get the items from India. They, they go to India, they produce for them, and then they will package it for them. And so a lot of these drugs are sourced. I don't know if you have a, a company producing drugs. Yes, we have some of them that I know Dan Adams does well. I know. NS, NS, and then I think uh, Tobinko also started some production, but most of them are imported. Then after procurement, having procured the items, you need to manage them. After an item has been procured and received by the health system or program, it must be transported to the service delivery level where the client will receive the product. During this process, the product must be stored until they are sent to the next lower level or until customer needs them. So after procuring the items, you need to store them. You need to, you need to store them until they are sent to the various destination. And then next one, we can talk about the logistics management information systems. The logistics, uh, logisticians added the word logistics to management information system. So it is not, it's not, it's not anything new. 
the logistics management information system is nothing new. It's just a matter of the adding logistics to uh, MIS, making it LMIS. This one is to create logistics management information system for the health um, um, services. And LMIS collect data about commodities. This information is often used for activities such as filling routine supply orders for health facilities. And then um, when you read extensively on logistics management information system, you, you, you come to realize that from the World Health Organization, they used to consider uh, Botswana, Tanzania, and probably Kenya as countries that make good use of the logistics management information system. Uh, because they are logistics management information system, sometimes it's not computerized, it's not, but then common phone with your mobile phones where they are not connected to internet. They use mobile phones to send information. So when you go to a facility, after, uh, once you go through the phone, they use their phone, they will enter all the information they require, then they will send it to the server. So they have real time information. It's not that somebody is using manual. Then at the end of the day, they will go and then <clears throat> they'll go and input it. Sorry, they'll go and then input it. They have a real time, uh, what do you call it, uh, data. And so the MI, uh, LMIS is used to collect data about commodities, and then it helps them to monitor. Um, logistics activities, especially in the area of... Uh, please, is my line breaking? No, sir. No, sir. Just me. Sir, Check sometimes, sometimes it breaks. Okay, because where I am, I don't, I don't expect them. That is why uh, I don't have to campus early morning to make sure that I avoid this interruption. Okay, so please, um, so far, what we've done, do you have any question with regards to what we've done? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, please, can you go over the Logistics Management Information System, the last point. Thank you. Uh, you say that the LMIS collect data about commodities. Okay, the LMIS, Logistics Management Information System. I know, I, I know you, you see, the system that you use, you might not know that it's called Logistics Management Information System. In your facilities, like when patients come, uh, you attend to them in some facilities, you keep them, you report them on a ledger. Uh, others, you have a computerized system that you enter them directly. And then, you know that those that are done manually, at the end of the day, you, you must also key or somebody keys them into the system just to enable you to have data. Just to enable you to know how to uh, uh, collect data for decision making. So the LMIS is a is, is an application. Let's say a computer computer application that collect data about commodities. So every activity that occurs on the floor mm -hmm, of the hospital is recorded. When patients come, you diagnose them. Okay, after taking the advice, probably they go to the consultation, uh, the consulting room, and then uh, they go to the lab, they are diagnosed. And then the drugs issue, whatever treatment is given to the patient is also recorded in the LMIS. So that is where you get the data. So at any point in time, when they want data, they know that this will enable them to know that, okay, these drugs uh, move, uh, these drugs move faster. So when next time when we are 
volume, the quantity should be increased or these drugs do not move and so we should reduce the quantity. It also helps you to know um, the product that you should concentrate on, the product that are needed mostly in the facility. So the LMIS is more or less a system of uh, oh, data yeah. collection and then reports. It's also uh, I report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So there are other activities that uh, are part of the logistics uh, uh, cycle. And then the, these activities help drive uh, or support the logistics cycle. They are the heart of a well-functioning logistics system. And these activities include organization and staffing. And, and the logistics system can only work if we are trained efficient staff monitor stock levels, place orders, and provide product to clients. Health programs assign the appropriate resources to staff. For example, supervision, supervision authority and technical knowledge to complete logistics activity. So organizing, organization, and staffing is very, very important. You need to always make sure that you have the right caliber of people to manage the logistics system because you need to have people who monitor stock levels, people who place order, people who provide product to client. So you can't just go and put lazy people there. You see, these days it's so easy to manage inventory. In the in, in those days where they are using the bean cards, then at any point in time you need to be counting the stock. Make it. Those are the times that we're running out of stock. Because sometimes you have a lot of them that if you are, if you are not careful, you will not be able to monitor them and get uh, real time uh, inventory levels. But this time around, because of um, applications, computer applications, softwares are available that they prompt you. Most cases, when you wherever the stock level get to, they prompt you. It get, when it gets to your real order point, it, it, it draws your attention. When your stocks are the one the stock are about to what, finish, you, you get to know. So uh, you need to get the right people, right caliber of people to help manage the logistics cycle. Then budget, budget, allocation and management of finances that really affect all part of the logistics cycle, including the quantities of product that can be procured, the amount of storage space that may be available, the number of vehicles that can be maintained, and the number of staff working in logistics. So budget is important. The success of the logistics uh, function uh, also depends on the budget assigned to the uh, department because your finances will determine whether, will, will, will determine the quantities and even the kind of product you buy. You know, if you want to uh, this, this uh, uh, malaria drug, the one in the yellow pack, the one ha which has a yellow pack. Coatem. Coatem. You know Coatem is around 60. 60 cities, some shall sell it around 80. Okay. And so, do you think, you know, that when you go to hospital, don't give quarter? Do they give? Mm, the hospital, do you, do you give people quarter? No, oh. so let private hospital. Yeah, the private hospital, they, no, they will bill you. So that one, they, they don't, they, are, they, 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 they don't care. But the Garvin hospital, they have a test on it. Mm -hmm. is, is it that and then the other malaria drugs. I was 
Sometimes atomos. Atomos believe in give atomos. No, we know more gifts. We know more gifts. Is the accessory that mother has them? That you give. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, Boris, where are you? Uh, Boris, where, where are you that they are selling uh, this drive 110? <laughs> so they give the 4-4. Four, four. They That's give us a separate Lumifan train. Yeah, uh, yes. That Lumifan train. I think uh, that one is from... Uh, is it uh, just pharmacy? Um, is is a, a Ghanaian pharmacy that, and so you realize that so your budget. That is why we're talking about not that the uh, your budget will determine. So if you have limited, uh, what do you call it, budget, and you go and use it to buy uh, expensive drugs, whereas the you have alternative that can perform the same function. Uh, then you are not managing your budget well. So your budget determines the quantities and the kind of item you buy. And even the amount of storage space in the warehouse you have, your budget will determine the size of your uh, warehouse. And even the number of vehicles that can be maintained by the facility. You go to some, especially in the mission hospitals, you go there, they have sometimes a lot of vehicles, uh, especially with the Catholics, they normally get, um I say, from Niva and other organizations, so we have them. And sometimes you go to some government hospitals, and, uh, a car is also your, a car, is, a car becomes a problem for them. So your budget will determine how your logistics um, uh, activities will go. The logistics activities will be smooth if your budget is high. And sometimes you struggle if you have a limited budget, if you have a small budget. The next one is supervision. Supervising the staff who work within the logistics system keeps it running smoothly, uh, uh, smoothly and then helps to anticipate needed changes. Routine effective supervision coupled with on the job training in logistics helps to both prevent and resolve supply problems and human resource constraints. So supervision is very, very important. No, as human beings as we are, if we are not supervised, sometimes as as adults as we are, we won't do the right thing. So we need yes, to supervise make sure that the so logistical system is uh, being uh, supervised and so that things move smoothly. So the next one is the monitoring. And, you see why I keep crying? The person will, will, will not talk. The moment I start That's talking, it's a little bit. Please, Sister Patricia, please, you are in class. Mute yourself. You see, when I see talking, they will be quiet. Then when I start talking, then the noise starts coming. Is it deliberate? Let us look at monitoring and evaluation. Routine monitoring and periodic evaluation of the pipeline and logistics system activities help demonstrate how well the system is performing. The areas that can be improved as well as the system's impact on the service uh, provision. So we, as I indicated earlier, we need to monitor, we need to evaluate our activities to see whether we are improving or we, to see where there is a need for improvement. So monitoring and evaluation here is very, very important when it comes to um, 
So let us look at the quality monitoring. Let's look at the quality monitoring. When we look at the, 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 the cycle, okay, the cycle as I indicated from, um, what do you call it? Um, the customers and to product selection to um, what do you call it? Procurement and quantification to monitoring to uh, what do you call it? Um, inventory management and then monitoring. You realize that in all of them, quality monitoring connects them. The quality monitoring connects the customer uh, and to the product selection, from the customers and to the product selection. And it is also important to understand that the role of quality monitoring. Um, and it's important to understand the role of quality monitoring in ensuring an effective, an efficient, and then effective logistics system. In the logistics cycle, notice how quality monitoring appears between each activity of the logistics cycle. Quality monitoring refers to only to the quality of the product, but also to the quality of work. So quality monitoring is not just the product, but then the work. So the work, if, if we have a quality product and uh, one believing the product is not doing a good job, it affects it. And sometimes you, uh, it, it doesn't, people don't see the quality of the product. Sometimes the service, the quality of the service can affect the, the quality of the product. So in the, in the logistic cycle, quality monitoring appears four times in the logistic cycle. One is between product selection and quantification and procurement. Between product selection, quantification and procurement. So quality monitoring plays an important role in quantifying and procuring the right product based on the appropriate word, product selection and use. So between the product selection and quantification and procurement, there should be quality monitoring. So you need to quantify how many, the quantity that we have, how much are we buying? So we need to work procure the right products. That's where the first right comes. The first right is the right products. Based on the appropriate product selection and use. And I was to mute your mic. Between product selection and quantification and procurement, quality monitoring plays an important role. So we need to know the uh, how much are we buying? What product are we buying? And then how much are we buying? So based on the appropriate word, product selection and use, product that are quantified should be on the national essential medicine list. Mm -hmm. So you cannot get up and then select any product and say that this is the quantity we should buy. You must always refer to the National Essential Medicine List. I know. And it has to be approved and then registered for use in the country and be included in the appropriate standard treatment guidelines. So the products we buy must be registered in the country. So as a facility, you can't just go out. Yes, the product may be good elsewhere. It could be using either US or wherever, but you can't bring it into the country when it's not, it, it, it hasn't been approved, when it's, the product is not approved, when the product is not registered for use in the country. So sometimes, once in a while, those who have relatives outside, sometimes they bring the and, and I think that the gamma, the, Please, classmates, you have work to do. Talk to your people. 
or I'll start removing you people from the. I'll start removing you because I can't tolerate it anymore. I remove them. Remove them. I mean, how? It means that even the lectures that we are having from the conversation that some of them are having, they are not even participating. They just log in just to disturb others. If we are seriously having lectures, how do you be, how, how do you communicate? How do you talk to people about things that does not concern, about things that don't concern whatever we are doing? You're just talking anyhow, and you are not even conscious of your environment. I mean, how can you do this? So class reps, talk to your people. Individual class reps, man, talk to your people. I'm not a teacher now. I'm going to to buy a Okay. Okay. So between the product selection, so we talk, we, 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 we've done with what you're saying in that if you are selecting a product, okay, the monitoring, you need to make sure that this is where the monitoring um, occurs. You need to make sure that the product being selected, the quantity being uh, recommended must be what approved. And the product must be a product which has been uh, registered. And normally, in Ghana, you register the product with the standard uh, the food and drugs board. You deal with the food and then uh, the, the drugs board. You would have to uh, give you the go ahead. And I think before that, it must go through the Ministry of Health. Since the hospitals are under the Ministry of Health, you cannot procure uh, anything. So between quantification, procurement, and inventory management. So between quantification and procurement and inventory management, procurement decision should be based on the supply plan that is developed during quantification. To ensure product quality, procurement document must be in must include detailed product and packaging specifications and expectations for quality at the time of receipt. So between quantification procurement and inventory management, so the packaging, how the product should be packaged. Do we want it in a syrup form? Do you want it in a capsules? Should it be in a, in a, in a blister? You realize that these days paracetamol is no longer in a container, in that big container that used to be. You still have drugs in containers that you put it in that rubber uh, what it, uh, or that paper to be given to people. No, sir. You so, because these days most of them are in yes, the sir. Ferrous sulfates. Ferrous sulfates. Okay. Yes, but, but, but you realize that most of the drugs are now uh, put in the, what do you call it, um, blister. Blister. Or they are sealed. Boxes. Because it is safer. Mm -hmm. uh, in those days, we're told that uh, when a drug, if a drug falls, that you don't pick it. But I think this 10 seconds rule applies to drug. Do you know the 10 seconds rule? No, sir. And when something falls down, when is something falls, okay, when Within 10 seconds, no contamination. It's after 10 seconds that it starts attract, start attracting bacteria and other things. 
So after procurement program, managers might check the quality of health commodities before they enter the distribution system. So here, the quantity, you talk about the quantity, you talk about um, the packaging, how it should be packaged, storage and everything. And then before you, you distribute them, you make sure that you've checked the quality of the commodities. From the store, especially even if you are in charge of receiving the item, make sure that the items are in good shape. Make sure that they are, they are not damaged before taking them. So between inventory management and serving customers, while products are received, okay. stored, and distributed, uh, in it's important man, to monitor uh, their quality. Mm. Mm. The Furthermore, the quality of the storage, yeah. conditions, and transportation mechanisms should be monitored. Mm. The inventory control system must be designed so that if followed, customers will receive the product they need at the time they need them. And, and you realize that when you receive the item before you distribute them, you need to monitor the quality of the product. You need to monitor the quality of the storage conditions and transportation mechanisms. So what transport are we using? Are we using air? Are we using, uh, what do you call it, um, road? And in our case, for instance, if we are transporting goods from here, from the south to the north, around this time, you know, there's sunny condition, so you can't put them in an open cargo. You need to, so when you look at the drugs that, uh, the vehicles that bring drugs to the central stores, you know, every drug and the kind of vehicle, every commodity and then the kind of vehicle that is used. And sometimes in our situations where our major means of transport is road, then we need to look at the type of vehicle we use. And then we need to also put in place inventory control system. And then we need to make sure that the, the system we put in place is designed in such a way that customer will see the product they need at the time they need them. So here we are talking about the right product and then being available at the right time. So even between serving customers and product selection, even after customer receive the product, the program must constitute must constitute um, Programs might determine if customers are satisfied with the quality of the product and whether the customers are satisfied with the service. That is why we get, you know, that every product has a caution. And then sometimes it's based on customer complaint. So sometimes the, the reactions customers get, the feedback customers give them is what they put there. There are people who don't like software drugs like myself. So whenever I'm giving drug, I need to know the composition of the drug. If it has sulfur in it, I won't take. And so at times, sometimes uh, when you say, when you when they give you drug and want to know the composition, they ask, why do you want to know the composition of the drug? That, that is what we like in our part of the world. People don't know themselves. If you have seen an ID card of foreigners, most foreigners that I have seen the ID card, behind the ID card. If they are allergic to something, if they have, if they have some condition, health condition, this they, you see it at the back of the card. Sometimes their blood group is at the, like the Ghana card. Mm? All this information they are important. So that in case of emergency, where the person cannot talk, you only pick the card, you slot into the system, or you key their. Code and every information about it, about them is there. 
So even if you, are, if you need to do uh, black transfusion, it, it's not that you are now going to the lab because sometimes by the time you go to the lab and come back, the person is gone. But in a part of the world, we don't do some of these things. Allergies, things that they are allergic to. Sometimes you pick them because when the person is in coma, if somebody is in critical condition, certain things, certain information you can't get from them. But once you see them on their card. So for me, the gamma card should be enhanced. You need to put our health records. Some, some, I mean, they're all the national health insurance card. Certain conditions, people who have certain conditions should be put there. So that the moment emergency, you pick their gamma card or any card that you enter, you should be able to get uh, the needed information to treat them. So health workers must adhere to standard treatment guidelines when serving clients. They must also conduct pharmacovigilance, uh, quality monitoring of both the product and the services critical to the success of efforts to promote the appropriate use of the product. So as I indicated, the quality of the product and the quality of the service being delivered is they, they are synonymous. I mean, you can't you can't go. They, they work hand in hand. The product and then the service, they work hand in hand. So you need to also adhere to uh, standard treatment guidelines when serving clients, and you know the standard when you're serving client what they are supposed to do. Um, so uh, you know, you know that there are certain things you can't do. You know that as a midwife, you can't, you can't uh, deliver mm, a baby with a bare hand. You can't do that with your bare hand, and that is why in situations where you know that the facility uh, does not have some of these things, you try to buy them to protect your own self. You need to buy them. Uh, you need to, you need to, you need to, you need to do it before. Um, you need to protect your own self because if you don't do that, you get infections and other things. One of the things that we need to look at is the policy and adaptability. In addition to the element in the logistics cycle, two additional factors, policy and adaptability that really relate to the logistics system. So what is policy? There should be policy uh, governing uh, how drugs are administered. So government regulations and procedures affect all elements of the logistics system. Many country governments have established policies on the selection of medical products, usually based on essential medicine lists. So you realize that as individuals or as um, workers within the health system, you cannot on your own uh, procure certain drugs, certain equipment, you cannot use them. Everything, uh, there should be a, there is a policy, not that there should be the policy governing the products, health commodities that can be procured and how they are used. And then many country governments have established policies on the selection of medical products. It's only based on essential medicine, how items are procured. Mm. Sometimes in Ghana, you know that um, it must go through uh, competitive bidding. And then uh, how items must be stored, how items must be distributed. And I learned this time around the Gamma Health Service, they use the EMS to do the distribution. Are they still using the EMS? Previously, they were doing it themselves. They gave it to DHL. And when I heard that uh, DHL was doing it, I was furious because EMS, which is a local company, uh, should be giving such contracts so that they also benefit. At least you have a lot of Ghanaians working in Ghana Post. So if EMS is on eight feet, then people get a job to do. It's so EMS, which does the distribution, or now 
the facilities themselves do. Please, which, which company does the distribution for you? Okay, so uh, you, if, let's look at adaptability. Adaptability is a characteristic of all successful logistics systems. Logistics must, logistics system must be designed to be flexible and adapt to constantly changing circumstances such as changes in demand for product or changes in funding policies for logistics activities. So it should be the, the, the policy must be what? Uh, the system you introduce, the logistics system must be adaptable. It shouldn't be a system that has to be redesigned every now and then. It should be robust to accommodate uh, what they call it changes. Other than that, whenever you introduce new uh, drugs or new items, you need to get a new logistics system. The system should be adaptable, should be a system that can um, be used anytime there are uh, changes in them. Think that, and then the last version we talk about the logistics, um, what do you call it, uh, terms, some of the terms in logistics. So, when you hear supplies, when you hear commodities, goods, material, product, and stock, they are the same, they are used interchangeably. Okay, supplies, commodities, goods, sometimes when you hear some of these, but they are the same. And then you have words like users, client, patient, customers. They are also used interchangeably, and they are also they also mean the same. So sometimes you can hear the way consumption uh, dispense dispense to user user data data on quantity of goods given to or used by customers. These are also terms that are used interchangeably, and they mean the same thing. <clears throat> there are a lot of them. We can talk about. Service delivery point, any facility where users receive supplies related to health services. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk of the pipeline. Pipeline is the entire chain of fiscal storage of facilities and transportation link through which supplies move from manufacturer to the user, including port facilities, central warehouse, regional warehouses, district warehouses, and all service delivery points and transport vehicles, including community base. So when you hear pipeline, is the when you hear lead time. The lead time is the time between when stock is ordered and when it is received and available for use. So in simply put, when you talk of lead time, lead time is a period between ordering and receiving. Okay, ordering and receiving. And so I think this one brings to an end our lecture. The six rights that I mentioned, they are there. Mm -hmm. So you can look at the six rights, I've put them there. Any question with regards to what we've done, it's almost time. If you have questions, you can ask. Um, I've seen two hands up. I've seen uh, two hands up, please, who are they? Um, patient. Hello, sir. Sir, yeah, please, yeah. it's not a question about what we have treated so far, but.